Labs working on onboarding data at scale onto the Filecoin network. He is focused on getting public data sets onboarded to the network via the Slingshot programs and is also part of the Filecoin Plus governance team working on client onboarding and trust. Reach out to him at any time to chat about data cap, DAOs, and some excellent puns. Today, Deep will lead us through Filecoin Plus and data DAOs. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well. Sorry I couldn't make it there in person, uh, but it looks like a fantastic event and uh, really well set up. Um, so yeah, please have a blast today and celebrate a little bit extra for kicking ass and getting together and doing productive things uh, in my stead as well. Thanks for the excellent intro. I'll probably just skip this slide in the interest of time. Uh, just covering, you know, leaving this up mostly for the parts at the bottom, where if you need to get a hold of me, find me on Falcon Slack as Deep Kapoor or find me on Twitter, DK Kapoor. Happy to chat about any of the things that I'm going to be discussing in this presentation uh, or anything at large with regards to uh, large-scale onboarding of data onto the Falcon network. So what I want to cover today with you uh, in the short 20 minutes that we have is number one, Filecoin Plus. Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with it, we'll go over the overall sort of core concepts of the program, uh, how it works, how the pieces sort of fit together. We'll talk through Slingshot and the various Slingshot related programs that exist today. Um, and at the end, touch a little bit about how these things sort of are moving towards the direction of, of DAO hood or DAOification. Uh, with regards to sort of a larger scale understanding of what it actually means to do that, um, and then how you can get involved and what's next. Uh, so without any further delay, let's talk about Filecoin Plus. So Filecoin Plus, by definition, aims to add a layer of social trust to the Filecoin network to incentivize useful storage. What does that actually mean? Great question. So I'm going to say a bunch of things here, and I don't expect you to understand all of them, but then we're going to dig into each of the components, and then hopefully it'll start to make sense. Right, so the first thing I want to tell you is that in the world of Falcon Plus, we have these different stakeholders. You can see them in colored boxes over here. I don't know if this screen is big enough for you to see this in person, and so I'm just going to walk you through it uh, because this is the text might be a little small. So you have community governance, root key holders, notaries, clients, storage providers, and miners. So the idea is that root key holders, notaries, clients, storage providers interact through the allocation and spending of a resource called data cap. Effectively, notaries serve as a key stakeholder position. We'll dig into each of these um, by allocating data cap to clients. Clients spend that data cap in storing deals on, on the network. So specifically, clients who are data owners who are bringing data to the Falcon network, use it to make deals. And this will start to make very soon. But then in making those deals, storage providers who receive deals that are sort of coming in with data cap, uh, receive a boost to their uh, adjusted power on the network. Um, and so you know, you're at a CryptoCon conference, it's important for us to explain to you what that actually means. Um, the way Falcon distributes its rewards is, is, a, is based on power. And if you're taking deals that have data cap in them, then you're getting a, a 10x boost uh, to the relative power, the relative footprint that you're occupying on the network uh, with regards to that deal that you're taking on. So if you're taking a 32 gigabyte deal uh, or give you by deal in this case, uh, it looks like 320 and, and inflates the rewards that the network is giving you. So in essence, this is a network-based subsidy of deal making between data owners and storage providers. Now let's dig into what each of these different stakeholders are, define data cap and, and sort of help this all make sense and why it's interesting. First things first, what is actually data cap? It's a novel generated resource within the Falcon network. It's programmatically generated. Um, we'll talk about how that actually happens. Uh, but as, as I just mentioned, uh, clients and data owners use data cap to make storage deals. It's a one-time use credit. So it's consumed as it is used in those deals. And then the storage providers receive a 10x quality adjustment to the power for serving deals that have been made with data cap. So back to the sort of core stakeholders of Falcon Plus and sort of defining them a little bit so you understand how they all come together. Uh, first, we talk about the root key holders. Uh, root key holders are executors for decisions made by the community on the blockchain network. So their reputations, uh, sorry, they're representatives of reputable organizations uh, that are in like our ecosystem effectively. Uh, Falcon, IPFS, Web3 sort of spaces. Uh, but ultimately, 
what they actually are. They're signers on a multi-sig. And that multi-sig has the power to invent data cap and issue it to notaries. And notaries being other addresses on the network, which are then flagged with the identity of a verifier. Uh, so just to recap, community figures out who the notaries are, and we'll talk about that in a second. Root key holders are the ones responsible for executing those decisions on behalf of the community. This typically means assigning the value of data cap to a notary that they can allocate, as well as the status of being a notary on the network. Notaries are arguably the, the most important stakeholder that keeps this engine going. Uh, their role is to do KYC and due diligence on incoming data owners and clients uh, to the network. Uh, the goal is for them to identify trustworthy clients. So this goes back to the top line sort of definition of Phil, uh, Phil Plus, which is that it's a social trust system, right? And so notaries are the ones that are actually looking to establish that trust to figure out who the clients are that are worthy of receiving this data cap that will give them these extremely free or cheap uh, storage deals. And so the idea here is notaries spend whatever effort they need to to ensure that they build a relationship with the client, understand who they are, and give them data cap commensurate with a level of trust that is warranted uh, based on the information that is provided by the client about what they're working on, who's funding it, why they're doing it, what their goals are, what the long-term plan is, et cetera. Uh, they also have a set of operational guidelines, uh, which includes how they should do these things, tooling that needs to be used, um, need to keep a record, uh, bookkeeping for auditing purposes, and ensure that they can actually talk through past decisions that they made and be held accountable by the community. They're selected through a, an election process, which includes putting an application out in the public, uh, which is scored on the rubric. Uh, so that rubric is also open source. Uh, and the idea there is the community can iterate on the rubric. Notaries are scored against the rubric. We do a pretty open election process where a notary applies, is scored on a rubric, gets to sort of contest. Um, and then the community also gets to contest. And then we finalize the rubric scores, rank all the notaries by their rubric scores, and then pick a set as defined by what the goals of that election process are. So hopefully this is starting to make sense. Uh, you know, we elect notaries as a community, rookie holders give no, like that particular address on chain, the ability to do these special things like issue data cap to clients. Um, and so clients, these are the actual data owners, you know, the demand side of the, the storage marketplace. They're aiming to be and come across as trustworthy so that they can get this resource to make extremely cheap deals. Storage providers represent the supply side, as you can tell by now. And then last and certainly not least is the actual governance community. Uh, this includes, of course, all the above stakeholders, but also includes just anybody interested in the community. Our uh, governance processes are completely open. We use GitHub as our primary tool for making progress in the program, indexing, documenting, um, and then we do open governance calls uh, bi-weekly. And so literally anybody could participate, includes you, uh, and come to our calls and help with things like defining the rubric, defining the roles, changing, adjusting the roles, putting in FIPS, to adjust the way the program works, et cetera, et cetera. Quick recap on the flow again. So notaries perform due diligence or KYC on clients uh, to verify them. So you'll often hear the term verify, uh, but really it's just established trust. Uh, they're a real client. They're looking for real clients with valid data that would actually bolster the usefulness or productivity of the Falcon network, further its goals in like being the marketplace and storage interaction point for all of humanity's information uh, and ensure that the the subsidy that's being created uh, crypto economically on the network is actually being utilized in the best way possible for a long term uh, whether that's for the actual clients uh, and their ability to do things because you know the nonprofit organizations scientific organizations etc or if it's for the network in terms of hey this is a really compelling use case that we want to serve and we're excited in making sure that we're able to deliver this uh, for everybody um, and show them that like this can be done on Filecoin. Uh, it, it may also include like stretching the network to understand how to handle. So we've got a working group, for example, that just spun up. They specifically think about enterprise support in Filecoin Plus. So how do we deal with data sets that can't be open all the way or are encrypted or have some private components? Like how do we still build trust with clients? Uh, because traditionally, sometimes, you know, notaries would just ask clients for samples of the data, but that's not necessarily possible in this world. Um, and then based on the identification of clients, and the reception of uh, or allocation of data cap, they then go expand that in deals. As they burn that data cap, storage providers get adjusted power increases and get uh, better rewards uh, from the Falcon chain. 
as long as that deal is live and that sector is running, et cetera, et cetera. Clients have three paths to getting data cap today. They can go into automatic verification. A uh, good example of this is a site verify.glyph.io. Uh, for anybody with a GitHub account greater than a year, and uh, sorry, greater than six months old, I think it's it's 20 days, yeah. Um, you can pretty much get 32 GB every month. We're adding a scaling component for this as well, based on like how you're using it and how frequently you're asking for it to ensure that you continue getting more if needed. Uh, this is extremely useful for testing purposes. Like if you're just wanting to get your first deal or get your first 20, 30 deals, see how it actually works, like build up a system, do a mini POC for yourself. This is the recommended path. Um, if you're a client who has a single use case and not a massive data set and is just looking forward to getting this done uh, with the least amount of effort and the least amount of operational overhead, uh, you opt for the second path where you typically get between 10 and 50 tabby bytes of data cap. Uh, that's through working directly with an elected notary. Uh, all of this happens in public. All of this happens in GitHub issues. Uh, but this does have the option of, oh, like, can I email you this stuff instead? And then you maintain that in your books instead. Uh, and so it has a little bit more flexibility for clients. And then the third and, and by far currently the most popular option is to go via this, what we call the large data set and path or like the Falcon Plus for large data sets program. Um, and here the goal is you're requesting 500 tabibytes plus for data cap. Um, each application can be up to five tabibytes, uh, but it's released in tranches as opposed to that data cap going out on its own. Completely public process, much larger, uh, accessible amount of data cap. Um, but because it's released in tranches, there's a little bit more scrutiny. Uh, every tranche that's released requires some participation from, from notaries, et cetera. So where are we at with the program today? Uh, so on the right, you can see this graph. This is the last uh, three months of um, active deals in Pebibytes on the network. Uh, the light green portion on top is Falcon Plus. The bluish portion at the bottom is like regular deals. Um, you can see that Falcon Plus has really been on a tear uh, since the new year. Uh, the LDN process has resulted in a lot of clients getting data cap and, and onboarding tons of data at a much faster rate than they were before. We're currently at the point where about 75% of all the data stored on chain is actually verified data coming into Filecoin Plus. Uh, that means more than 55 pavy bytes of data cap uh, being used in deals. Uh, and that represents about 75% of the data cap that's been given to clients. And so there's still about 25% that's sitting latent and every single day more data cap is being issued and distributed. In terms of notaries, we just wrapped our third election closing. Um, and so we're at about 60 active notaries soon, once they're all onboarded and willing to participate. Uh, last year, we spent half of it at about 10 and half of it at about 20. And so we're three axing the amount of notaries in the program um, and also like significantly increasing the amount of data cap available to them to serve. Uh, and this is mostly an experiment to see how the program actually scales. Um, right now, if you go and work with a notary, it takes about 10 days to allocate data caps. So it's very important to us that we work towards bringing that number down. So upcoming focus areas, uh, well, actually, these are more like current focus areas and then upcoming development. Uh, first is what I just mentioned, uh, what we call TTD. That stands for time to data cap. This is like our top line sort of success metric in the Falcon Plus program. We want to ensure the data cap is available and attainable in like the one hour to three day range uh, at all of these levels. And so... And that includes, you know, having more notaries, having the notaries be more active, improving the UX for clients, um, automation and scaling for data cap applications, et cetera. You can see the little flow chart on the right, uh, which sort of walks you through how we want to move towards more automation, reduce manual interaction points, uh, and only bring in the human interaction in the cases where things are starting to go awry. Um, focus on risk. Uh, reducing the amount of touch points, uh, more focused on sort of on-chain tracking and automation of like flags for like risky behavior or abuse or profiteering of the, of the program. Like worth thinking about this as like us building out a reputation system or a credit system for data owners and storage providers inside the Falcon Plus world. And then generally evolving the notary role a little bit uh, to go from what we call like the gatekeeper-esque functionality to more like guardians of the network uh, that changes the way in which they interact, but of, co of course comes with discussions around their incentives uh, how to retain uh, their attentiveness and overall have them deliver a service effectively to the network while still maintaining the best interests of the network and not themselves um, and participate in governance uh, in addition to just what the community does today. So how do you want to get involved? Uh, we'd love to have you come join us in the Falcon Plus channel in Slack. We have bi-weekly governance calls. Uh, you should come there. We're working on sort of improving our processes 
we'd love to have you as you know think about notary incentives think about how we want to evolve uh, processes and system design uh, and generally as we move towards like structures that are similar to like a DAO we're spinning out working groups experimenting with governance uh, system design etc and generally over overhauling the incentive and long-term uh, ideation around how Falcon plus will continue to serve the network into the future uh, and we're having a Falcon plus half day summit um, at Austin Texas today before Phil Austin if you haven't heard of it yet uh, so Phil Austin will happen June 8th uh, we're doing uh, Falcon Plus Day June 7th. This will be a virtual first event. So even if you can't make it in person, we'll be broadcasting this, uh, live streaming it, and of course, recording it. Uh, so definitely more information to follow on that. Keep your eyes out. Switching gears uh, for the last couple of minutes here to talk about Slingshot. Uh, Slingshot is a community program for data processes and developers that rewards the storage of real, valuable, and usable data on the Falcon network. So this is completely different. Um, then Falcon Plus, but you'll see some similar threads and sort of in closing, hopefully, uh, I'll be able to share with you why I'm talking about both these programs and why they're compelling for you. So Slingshot overall has been running since Falcon went mainnet, which is just about 18 months uh, to the day. Um, through these 18 months, we've had about 37-ish petabytes of data onboarded to the network uh, comprising of open data sets. So there's like 60, 61 data sets uh, all the way from like COVID data to environmental data, the governmental data, um, and like random public use things that we found that could be interesting, sourced from scientific organizations, nonprofits, NGOs, et cetera. We also have a data explorer, uh, which is pretty compelling in terms of helping you identify where you can retrieve that data from its mirror on Falcon, as opposed to needing to pay for an AWS retrieval service or needing to run your compute operations in different cloud provider services here, you can actually get it effectively for free or extremely cheaply uh, from the Falcon network itself. Recently, in the last six months, um, sort of to couple with just this onboarding thing, uh, we've added two different programs as well uh, that are focused on the longevity and the long-term viability of the data being onboarded. Uh, so on the left, you have Evergreen. Uh, the idea with Evergreen is effectively as Slingshot deals reach their end of life, we want to continue renewing them. Um, so right now, this is a little bit more manual. We're very excited for the Falcon virtual machine to show up so that we can automate some of these things. Uh, but the idea here is tracking the pieces of data that are in expiring deals and then incentivizing the rebuilding of, of replicas for them to ensure longevity, permanence, uh, long-term availability of that open data on the, on the Falcon network. Uh, the primary driving incentive here is actually data cap. And so this goes back to the first part of the conversation about what, like, how are we able to do this? The idea is that by adhering to an extremely high standard of quality storage and showing that we're getting to do things that push the definition of how to make data useful on Filecoin, how to contribute to best practices around that, both for the data owner side of the house, but also for the, the storage provider side of the house, uh, we're able to justify uh, to the notaries that they should sort of support the running of this program. On the right, we have uh, recovery as an effort and within recovery specifically the restore program. Restore program specifically started out around an incident where we lost a little bit of data, um, well, a substantive amount of data after like a freak accident, effectively a fire in a data center. And so we built this as like the first step towards like self-healing where we can design systems where data on slingshot if it's lost. And this is specifically not in terms of end of life for deals, but rather like a sector like faults or a search provider decides to walk away how do we rebuild and self-heal from that? Like, how do we maintain a healthy number of live replicas at any given point in time? How do we make sure they're available? Um, both of these programs uh, are currently open and uh, Evergreen especially, if you are thinking about a storage writing operation and listening to this, uh, it's a pretty interesting one to get started. Definitely check, out, um, check it out. Why I'm telling you about this. Quick primer on DAOs. I think you guys are all aware of this. Decentralized autonomous organizations, um, typically referred to as a combination of community plus some sort of contract. Uh, what we care about or what I care about right now is specifically DAOs that care about data. So the creation of value through shared data or data sets. This is not just limited to the monetization of demand for data, though that is one excellent use case and one way in which data DAOs have often been described and arguably the data DAO uh, sort of set that uh, ideation process forward with that scope. So what I'm trying to structure right now is like using these components together. It's a very complicated flowchart on the right. I'm not going to dig into it too much here. Uh, but the idea is that, you know, we've got a component 
we've got a set of components that come together very nicely to build a system that can, in a clean manner, uh, set up data for long-term preservation on the Falcon network. So with just Slingshot, you've got onboarding data. With Evergreen, you've got the aspect of guaranteeing its permanence. With Restore, you can do the self-healing and the rebuilding. Um, and then we have this component that we've used in Slingshot for a while uh, via the deal bot, where we check for re retrieval success rates. And uh, so we've got retrieval success rates as a service, as I like to call it, where we do sampling and retrievability and, and have metrics on the health of the data itself. So even though it might be alive and the deal might be good, that doesn't actually mean that it's accessible. And so by having a path to onboard, maintain, ensure that it's repaired and have a way in which it's like made, like all those things happen in a way that the like clients that need to access that data are able to. We do have all these nice components that sort of come together uh, and can leverage like significant automation and, and, and development in the future uh, to build like an interesting uh, DAO structure. And so we'd love to have you involved if you're interested in this conversation. Lots of work to do ahead of us here, definitely in terms of defining the incentives, the governance, et cetera, um, leveraging the virtual machine itself. Uh, of course, also just the data architecture and how we want to do the analysis, how we want to like build that sort of reputation aspect that I mentioned. Uh, so specifically, if you'd be interested in, in thinking about these things further, please reach out to me um, either on Slack or Twitter, or this QR code should actually take you straight to our um, definition and JD for one of the roles on the team. Uh, that doesn't have to be the role you want. I just want to put it up there as like a, hey, if you want to get involved sooner, uh, definitely please check that out. Awesome. I know I'm a little bit behind schedule. Uh, thank you all for bearing with me and getting on my uh, speed train as you were nearing the, the time limit for this presentation. Uh, thank you for having me, uh, Alex and ZX, and congrats once again on answering the event. I'm, ha I'm looking forward to being there in person next time. Uh, in case there's any questions, be please feel free to, to chase me down. I don't know if we have ability to do the questions right now because I know there's a pretty packed agenda to keep you guys going. Uh, but I'm going to rely on the host to let me know. Uh, if not, Really appreciate uh, your attention. Thanks a lot, Deep, for that overview of Filecoin Plus and Slingshot and their various aspects. We have time for maybe one question to the presenter. Uh, hi, yeah, just really quick. Um, so I understand storage miners will want to participate in verified deals to you know, have an increased uh, percentage of the block rewards. Um, what is the incentive for clients to want to get you know notarized or verified to to have more data cap? Yeah, uh, great question. So because storage providers have that incentive, um, the amount of actual fill or like money that gets charged to make those deals is significantly lower. Um, actually, the average verified deal in the network today is completely free. So the incentive for KY, for that KYC and due diligence process is effectively you're trading that time, that effort, that loss of complete privacy on what you're doing and, and adding a little bit more transparency for getting absurdly subsidized deal making on the network. So especially as, as you know, uh, storage providers start to build long-term businesses on the network uh, and want to offer uh, the ability to store data at scale safely, um, instead of having to pay in fill, you get to effectively extend that data cap and spend it. And so that's why it's extremely interesting and compelling for clients to go through that process. Of course, we are working on making that process easier and, and faster and all of that. And so that is also good, hopefully for clients in the long term. but that is the primary incentive today. I'd say there's a secondary social incentive as well, where like doing this stuff in public uh, means that everybody in the network sort of sees that you're trying to do the right thing sees the work that you're putting in behind it, it helps you sort of gain clout uh, for long-term partnerships, long-term relationships, uh, hopefully favorable deal-making climates in the future. Uh, but then, you know, coming into Falcon Plus Day, for example, we have a couple of people on both sides of the marketplace that want to be presenting, share the work that they've done, the tooling they've done, and how they're contributing to the success of the network. So I'd say, yeah, the monetary incentive of an extremely cheap deal, the social incentive of building cloud in the network. 